Hey folks, this is Picohan from the North American server, and this is the Koenig. General we are on the map Straits, and this is a rare tier 5 and 6 game, but of course, we are tier 5. This is not an outstanding game, but my experience with the Koenig is that while I haven't had a lot of outstanding games, I've had a very high number of pretty good games. So this is representative. Now I I don't like what our team is doing here. I really think the T22 should go to A. But since he isn't, I'm not comfortable going there alone, so I'm going to try to back him up where he's going. It would be nice if he slowed down a little bit so we could catch up, but he just wants to charge in there. So, what does the Koenig have over her tier 5 counterparts? Well, she has the best DPM, and all she trades is a little bit of gun caliber for that. She also has arguably the best survivability. She takes probably a little bit more normal penetrations than the other two, but because it's German armor and it's got the turtle back, you're less likely to take citadels when you're brawling up close. Her secondaries are pretty good, but they're not as good as like the Bismarcks or anything. You have to get to the higher tier before you get some really good secondaries. So the T-22 has gotten to B, and it's about this time that I'm noticing that both teams are doing something kind of weird. They're all trying to go to B, go to the south. I see the enemy Minikaze, and even if you're a battleship, you should always shoot at destroyers if you can. Bit of a tough shot. I think he's gonna drop off before I actually take it, though. No. no, but I miss. Well, he dropped off there. So the T-22 might have succeeded in capping B if the enemy team did not do this weird thing. But as it is. He's gonna die. And I think the marblehead who charged in after him is also gonna die. Koenig has pretty good range at 16k. It's not Congo, of course, but I think it's a little bit better than the New York. However, her slow speed and high dispersion mean that I think you really need to stay close to the action, much like the US slow battleships, New York, New Mexico, Colorado. Of course, trying to shoot at cruisers. This buddy only is giving a great broadside. But all we get are overpens and base captors. Thank you. So here I'm trying to stay close to the action, but of course this is a little bit too close since the T-22 and the Marblehead have died. I am the first ship and I'm taking a lot of fire. This turn is what I always call the dangerous turn. But at least in the Koenig, if other battleships had been shooting at me, it would not have been as bad as if I had done this turn in a new or a Congo, because she doesn't take it up that easily. This buddy only is giving a rise out again, and he's gone. At close range, the 10 shots, they can do a lot of damage, even though the caliber is lower. Problem solved, sir. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, A looks like it's capturable. Those torques were probably from the Buddy Oni. And I want to go help take it. It's Knigsburg standing still. 
but I would like the cruiser to spot the destroyer. Which it looks like he's trying to. Uh, before I push in there. Just trying to tank some damage while I'm at it. That text is also moving very slowly. So, the gun layout of the Koenig is similar to that of the New York, but unlike the New York, where the center gun has pretty much appalling traverse angles, the Koenigs are actually decent. And so, while in theory, the New York has better DPM than the Congo, I would say in practice, it's not a big difference. That extra gun just doesn't... You, you really can only use it if you're going against cruisers because you can broadside cruisers without without risking your ship as much as if you were broadsiding battleships. Once again, the enemy Minikaze shows himself. I'm trying to dodge and weave between the Cleveland's shots. I know it's a tough shot for him from this range, too. The ship is on fire. Somehow we do an overpin with no damage on that guy, and the other guy gets the kill. I'm trying to see if the Nuremberg will push the Cleveland with me. This looks like a fight we might, might not be able to win. This is a this is a bit of a difficult distance for the Koenig because the dispersion is not that great. And I can't really push into him because he can too easily kite away and burn me to death. So like the Nuremberg, I'm going to try to turn around here. Maybe after I take some shots at this Leander. Uh, try to turn around here. And push the Cleveland back and maybe go for B. You can see we have a battleship at F3 who really is not being helpful what's new in this game, right? The Leander... Is showing himself... <laughs> Trying to take some shots at the Leander... All I really need is one or two lucky shots. This should be a pretty good range for the Koenig. Under 10, you start landing a lot of shots. But the Leander is dodging. Which does make it a little bit more difficult. giving a broadside. It looked like he was turning very slowly. But I think I'm underestimating how fast these British cruisers can accelerate. I ripple fired as well to try to see where I needed to aim. The Leander is getting away again. But I'm seeing that a group of ships, the two battleships in the south and the two cruisers who are already there, are converging on the center. And I want to put myself into a position where I can brawl, but maybe with just one at a time. All right, that's the general strategy of this game. You want to limit the amount of damage you can take and then take advantage of someone else's broadside or whatever weak point they might have. So the Koenig, 
I would say that she is a bit of power creep over the New York and the Congo. If you look at her stats, unlike any of the stat sites, they are way higher. And you could say it's partly because the player base has gotten better. But I think the ship definitely counts for some of that difference. Uh, she's very good. Although I, I've, I've had a lot of fun with the Congo recently too. I haven't played the New York for a while. Once again, the Leander is very low. I just need that one Citadel. And I think it's worth, worth the risk. I didn't get it. Uh, turning away here, because I think the Texas has his eye on me. I just want to keep angled and maybe go for the Königsberg. Or the Leander. Once again, this is pretty standard battleship fare. You want to keep yourself angled against the enemy battleship and then try to go for the easier to kill targets. In this case, the cruisers. Uh, you're going to see me mess up here in a bit. I'm trying to keep angled against the Texas, but I'm also trying to get greedy and bring all my guns to bear against the Königsberg. Uh, like I said, the Koenig's firing arcs are good, but they're not that good. That was an okay shot against the Königsberg, given how well he was angled. So as you can see, I was going to take a shot on the Königsberg, but the Texas was giving me a brilliant broadside. And you'll notice here, because of the Koenig's low caliber guns, I did not try to aim Enemy for the waterline. I tried to aim for the upper belt and I got 14,000 with all normal pens. Like I said, from 10k, uh, you have a pretty good chance of hitting all your shells. So the Texas seems to have learned from his mistake. Kniggsburg is going backwards, so I'm going to shoot at the Kniggsburg. And we take him out. That was excellent. That's the sort of random citadel you're looking for. Uh, and I showed a little bit too much side to the Texas. And he punished me for it. Here I'm debating whether I want to fight the Texas or the Cleveland. see though while we did not take any citadels from that decent salvo from the Texas we took a lot of penetration damage. Unfortunately the Nuremberg is dead. At least we are capping B now. We have a one ship advantage but we have a points disadvantage. That looked like a pretty good broadside on the Texas, but we only do 4,500, which is unfortunate. I am trying to get ahead of my division mate, Demast, here, and see if I can take fire off of him. But I think he's going to die from the Cleveland. I'm trying to get one more shot on the Texas before he goes behind the island, but I think these are mountain shots. Luckily for our team, and unluckily for Damast, he's going down, but that leaves no one firing on me, and I can get all these cap points. This Cleveland has been very wily. I'm hesitant to waste shots on him, especially since he's so far away.
Now this is a little bit dicey. As usual, I try to angle against the Texas. Well, first I try to shoot at him since it looks like he's shooting at something else. The ship is on fire. I wanted to angle at the Texas and shoot at the Cleveland, maybe after I take the shot. But the Cleveland was doing too much damage to me. And I decided that if I could ram the Texas, do some damage to the Cleveland, I could secure the game for our team. You'll notice I ran out of heals, and that's because at the time, I was debating between using Vigilance or Superintendent. And this game made me decide on Superintendent, because I felt like I was in the situation where taking the last shot here, where I was running out of heals more than I was in the situation of needing to avoid torps. And so we're pretty far ahead in caps and we're up in one ship, but this team, this team makes me sweat a lot before they take the win. So here are the results screens. Uh, they're a little bit weird because I wasn't playing this game on my normal computer. We did 103,000 damage, killed three ships, got a devastating strike. We were the top of our team. The 200,000 base EXP is probably a little bit better than pretty good, especially for um, a tier five. The Cleveland on the other team also did a good job kiting everybody in the north and keeping himself safe. You'll see that he survived. He was the wily guy. Uh, pretty much all of our damage is AP, but we did get 400 miserable damage from secondary and another 11,000 damage from that ram. Uh, we tanked 1.8 million damage. That's actually a pretty, a pretty solid amount. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a nice day.